Hey everybody, I'm Daniel, this is Play the Game HQ, and I recently had the absolute pleasure of spending a few days in Reno, Nevada at the Gamma Expo. Now, if you're not familiar, Gamma is the, uh, it's the Game Manufacturers Association. The Gamma Expo is the industry side trade show where Gen Con and Origins and PAX Unplugged are consumer shows. Gamma is the, the Gamma Expo is the industry side show. So it's a place for publishers to meet with retailers, and it's also a place for media to see a lot of upcoming games that will be, a lot of them will be revealed at those other consumer shows. Uh, but I just wanted to take a chance to go through. I saw a ton of games at that show, but wanted to take a chance in this video to give you 30 games, just a, a sneak peek at about 30 games, not about exactly 30 games, that I just want to put on your radar. These aren't going to be in-depth looks. These are just going to be kind of highlights of the games for you to take a look at to put these games on your radar as they come out throughout this year. Maybe a few of them might be kind of trickling into next year, but most of these are games that are going to be coming out in 2023. And I just want to share them with you because I loved seeing these games and getting a chance to play some of them and test some of them. So here you go. 30 games in... My goal is eight minutes. We'll see how it goes. First off is Gnome Hollow. This is from Amon Anderson. This is a game that was being pitched at Gamma. It was a prototype, but it was a fully formed prototype. The artwork was amazing. There's such a cool story behind the artwork that I hope to get to share and put in video form Sunday, someday because I just loved hearing the designer's story as to how just life events led him to creating this artwork that then turned into a game. Now, Gnome Hollow is a game of your gnomes. You're building circles of rocks and you're trying to score points based on how big those circles are. The points that you're getting, the little point tokens are all bottle caps and keys and little knickknacks that have fallen on the forest floor. I love playing it. I loved hearing about it. I'm excited to see which publisher that lands with. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that that game will be picked up by a major publisher. So Gnome Hollow Keep an eye out for it because you are going to see more of that game soon. Second is Sky Team. Now this was a top game amongst a lot of the other reviewers and media people that I talked with and just other people who were seeing games at Gamma. It is a cooperative two player game. You are co-pilots trying to land a plane. You're gonna be rolling and placing dice to do different things with the plane to get closer to the airport to lower the plane, to put up the flaps, to put on the brakes, to increase or decrease speed. Big part of the game, you can talk as much as you want until you roll the dice. Once you roll the dice, you are not allowed to say a word to your co-pilot because they're working on landing the plane. So it's communication beforehand and then just kind of reading the other player and trying to non-verbally land the plane with the dice that you're placing. Tons of fun, really excited to play that one again. Wild Tiled West, this was from Dire Wolf. It is a tile-laying city building game. You're mining, you're gambling, you're fighting outlaws. It seemed on the lighter side of some of the things that Dire Wolf has done, but just, I, th I think that's gonna be a really popular game once that gets out there. Next is Adventure Party. This is an RPG party game from Smirk and Dagger. You're gonna be given a scenario. You're gonna roll a D20 behind your screen on your turn. That D20 is going to determine how effective your action was. And then you have to tell the story of your turn based on your role. And the other players are going to be guessing what you rolled based on what you describe. Also from Stur Smirk and Dagger was Boop or Spooky Boop. It is Boop, the adorable cat game, but this has ghosts. It's coming around, out around Halloween. There's new rules and variants and new adorable little cat miniatures jumping on the bed. The reception of that one was absolutely amazing. Next up, we have Leaf from Tim Eisner and Weird City Games. I have talked about this game before and I just love the table presence. The leaves don't seem like they should work together on the table, but they do. They, they just connect so gracefully and so well. And it just, I love the table presence. I love the design of the game. That one I believe is gonna be popping up later this year. It kickstarted last year. Next we have Dodo's Riding Dinos. This is a Mario Kart style board game. You're gonna be racing around the track, dropping bananas and other obstacles. Looks like just a ton of chaotic fun. We also have Emerge from Pandasaurus Game. You're gonna be forming islands from volcanoes, placing meeples, scoring from a multiplier of your islands plus your meeples. To me, it felt like a combination of like God's Love Dinosaurs meets Oros with a bunch of other stuff. It's 
It is neither of those games, but felt familiar to those games. We have a new Arnak expansion in CGE that adds new elements. It adds asymmetric player abilities, cool mechanic elements. You have monkey assistance. You also have within this a six chapter campaign. Also from CGE, we have Kutna Aura. It is, uh, you're gonna be playing as guilds and building the city. You're trying to make it as prosperous as possible while you're also building your own engine. Each player has their own guild that's gonna determine what you can do. It has a really cool economy element where as you build out the, the things in the city, you're going to adjust the pricing of things. It has a very tactile kind of um, pricing board where you're gonna be sliding things up and down. Really jumped at as just a production element. I really loved the economic kind of readouts that they had uh, and just how those show the price of the commodities. We have Mother of Frankenstein from Arcane Wonders. This one is available now. It is a three game escape room puzzle. Each game has multiple sessions that you're going to play, but it's about the life of Mary Shelley. In the first game, you're going to be building out a ring on the table. Second game is a jigsaw puzzle. Third game, you're actually building a 3D puzzle and each game builds on the previous one, but it's an escape room. You're solving mysteries. You're trying to decipher clues from what you're building. Looks like a really cool game. We have that one in our possession. We will be doing some content on it, reviewing it and actually playing through it soon, but looked like a really cool game. Love the idea of it and just the multi-game tactile like elements of all those puzzles. Next up, we have Moments. This is from Van Ryder Games. Can be played as a standalone or expansion with Keepers. The uh, it's a it's a game featuring the photography of Byron Jajorian. We have a full play of playthrough of Keepers out there. If you want to watch that, I'll leave a link to that below. Lots of fun, really simple. The photography of the game really draws you in and makes it one that's going to be accessible to a lot of your non-gamer like family because you're just, it, the photography is beautiful. It's it's eye-catching, it's gorgeous. Uh, Byron does a is a world-renowned photographer and this game features his photography really, really well. Also from Van Ryder, they released their first custom mini. It is a dice jail. Uh, talked to them last year about this kind of investment that they've made. They've, they've bought some machinery and invested in the ability to create custom miniatures. Um, and it looks like they have that off the ground with this dice jail that they as I understand it, they not only designed it, they actually manufactured this themselves. Uh, last one from Van Ryder, we have Gourmet Popcorn Dice. Not sure exactly what the Gourmet Popcorn Dice is going to add, but it was super colorful, looked great. Um, just as a fan of that, as a family game, I think that's going to be a really fun one and, and excited to see what they add to it. Next, we have Catapult Feud expansions. You have the, the Hydra, the Volcano, and the Viking Ship. Catapult Feud is one of Jared and Peyton's favorite games. Just pull out and play together. It's really simple. It's super tactile. You're shooting these, um, you, you have an actual catapult. You're launching these rocks, which are rubber. They're not painful. They're not dangerous, but you're launching rocks at the other player's catapult or castle, trying to knock it down. And these expansions add a hydra that's going to launch lava balls at you. It adds a volcano that's going to uh, roll lava balls randomly. And if it hits any part of your castle, it just melts it. And then you have a Viking ship that's going to be uh, attacking all of the players kind of randomly. We also have Two Glory, which uh, was just on Kickstarter from the publisher Catapult Feud. It's it's uh, pick up and deliver meets dexterity. The pick up and deliver is obvious, but you're launching cannonballs from your ship with this cool mechanic that uh, you're actually kind of flicking a little flipper thing on the ship that is going to launch the cannonballs at the other ships cause damage to them, mess up things on the ships, and you're gonna score different points based on if you break the ship, if you knock things off or knock other people off the ship. Uh, just a, a really unique element to the little flipper thing that's gonna add that, that tactile dexterity element. 1985 games, this is not a game. It is D20s, the ones that I saw, or it's, it's dice sets that are in super nostalgic boxes. They have VHS sets, they are like, VHS boxes, everything about that company was just super nostalgic. So be sure to check them out, show them some love and, and just check out their just nostalgic dice sets. Stone Spire Architects from Thunderworks. It's Sushi Go meets dungeon buildings. You're gonna be building pathways underground, trying to meet different requirements for the, the position of different elements on your cards. Scram from Bezier Games. It's the silver, it's the, uh, silver system 
but you're camping and the animals won't leave you alone. It's a little more team focused, but you're trying to get rid of cards with teammates, trying to get the lowest score on your side. It has the same feel as silver where some hidden cards and some visible cards are out and you're gonna be drawing cards. You can choose to discard it for the ability or replace a card in your set to try and get lower scores, but you just, you're being messed with. The animals won't leave your campsite alone and you have to get rid of them through card actions and replacing cards, things like that. Uh, Triketa from Pegasus Spiel. You're gonna be playing tiles from a pile into a row, and eventually you're going to have to claim a row. Your goal is to have exactly three of a kind of those tiles. And if you don't do that, if you do get three of a kind exactly, you're gonna get the printed value of the tile. But if you have more than three, then you don't get any points and the tiles that you have are worth negative one. So the whole game is a tug of war where you're trying to set yourself up to get what you need, uh, but also make the options bad enough that the other players don't take what you want. Uh, Cosmoctopus from Lucky Duck is a Gen Con release. You're trying to summon the great inky one to your world before anyone else. You're playing cards, collecting tentacles. There's some engine building. I didn't personally get to play this one, but I watched a lot of people playing it and everyone that playing it just seemed to be having a blast with it. Senjutsu, this is also from Lucky Duck. It is samurai dueling. It is absolutely gorgeous. The, the uh, campaign and rule book is a comic book. Uh, the whole production of this is fantastic. You are going to be, it's not deck building. It is, again, it's samurai dueling, but you're constructing a deck more like Magic the Gathering rather than deck building where you're drawing cards and trying to add them to your deck uh, as you go. Paper Dungeon, last one from Lucky Duck. It's a pocket roll and write where the pencil is the dice. They call it a P6, uh, but it's just a little book with a bunch of like roll and write puzzles. The whole thing is procedurally generated, so every notepad is unique. It's nice and compact. You're gonna be able to throw it in your purse, your backpacks, so you always have a game with you to play. Robot Quest Arena, this is from Wise Wizard Games. They've been working hard to get the minis durable. I first saw this game, they kickstarted it before I saw it at PAX Unplugged in 2021. It had been working really hard to get the minis durable, uh, and I think they finally have them where they need to be. The game looks great, the minis look awesome. That one is gonna be coming and fulfilling soon. Uh, we have Drift from Good Games Publishing. This is gonna be coming to Kickstarter at some point. This is my top game from Gen Con. It's awesome, it is the most realistic racing on a tabletop experience that I have played. Uh, cannot wait to see this on Kickstarter and to get this on this table, make some content with it. Also from Good Games, we have Trick Trick Draw. It's a dueling card game. It's one of those where you can play a card face down for the points, play it face up for the actions. You're trying to get, I believe, to 10 points. The actions are going to flip cards. They're gonna affect the other player. It was really easy to learn as you play because it's so simple and accessible but also really, really strategic. Uh, Mercurial, also from Good Games. These next couple are from Good Games. Uh, incredibly gorgeous game. The artwork was, um, was just incredible. You're rolling dice and using elemental alteration cards to modify the dice, then assigning those to spells that you're gonna use to complete heroic tasks. Again, absolutely gorgeous. That's Mercurial. Uh, next one from Good Games is Star Tycoon. You're building your galactic corporation across different planets. It's tableau building, but it has a really unique economic engine where the things you do on your turn are going to affect and change the marketplace status for the next person. You're gonna be shifting prices and values of things up and down. So what you do to the market on your turn is going to set up the market that the next player has. So you may be able to do some things that may not be the best thing for you, but is going to be really bad for the next player. Um, it, it, it was a really cool, just the way that shifted with the play was really cool and not something I've seen a lot of. I know it exists in other games, but it's, it's not something that I have seen a lot of. Uh, so Blob Party from WizKids, it's a party game where everyone starts with their own blob. And yes, it does come with the blobs and googly eyes. And the goal of the game is to become one big blob by everyone giving the same answers. And last, number 30, also from WizKids, is Unboxed. It's a puzzle game where you have discovered a cache of ancient games, and your goal is to figure out how those games work. Different puzzles have different game components and different decks of cards that offer clues, and you are trying to decipher 
from what you have in front of you, how that ancient game was played. Really cool concept. So there we go. That was 30 games in uh, a little more than eight minutes, but hopefully that gave you some good games to put on your radar to take a look at. If you have any questions about any of them or if you saw any other stuff from Game Expo and you have questions about the games that were there, let me know and I will do my best to answer those. Uh, just leave me a comment. I think that's all for this one. So until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.